I just want to ask you, uh, me and my wife and my kids, uh, we went to see the lawyer uh, last month, uh, May 1st, about my uh, to file for a green card. And uh-huh. she said, she told us, she told me and my wife uh, not to file for a green card because she worried about my uh, marijuana charge and my DUI. And she also said she worried about they're going to ask me how come I get a job from that here and I'm, I'm not a resident or a U.S. Uh, citizen. So what should I do? All right. Where are you from, Junior? I'm from uh, uh, Western Samoa. W- Western what? Western Samoa. Western Samoa. All right. So yes. tell, me, tell me about this marijuana charge. What was this marijuana charge? It's a 1.0 gram. It's a leaf. Did you call yesterday? Yes, sir. Yes, you, man. Yes, right, sir. You yes. Called, right. You called yesterday. I remember because yes. I said I said one point zero grams is a leaf, and then you, <laughs> yes. and then you had a DUI, and then yes. you worked. Okay. So let me tell you. Um, let me let me debunk three three things right now. Okay. Number one. Number one debunking. Okay. There is a wave. You you are you are inadmissible. You are certainly inadmissible, even with one point zero grams a leaf of marijuana. Okay, yes. but what the law yes. says is you can file a waiver based on hardship to your family, to your wife, and to your and to your children. You can file a waiver based on hardship to them as long as you can prove it was less than 30 grams, which you said is 1.0. We'll prove it. So there's a waiver for that. Okay. Okay. Number two, if you are married to a United States citizen and you worked out of status, you are out of status and worked. Whether you pay taxes and didn't pay taxes on that work, that is not a bar to getting a green card. That is just the law. Okay, that is immigration 101. We don't even have to get to advanced immigration. If you're married to an American citizen, you work out of status, you work undocumented, that is not a reason to deny you a green card. Okay, immigration 101 okay. stuff. So you're okay there. Number three, a DUI, I don't know the facts of your specific immigration uh criminal uh dui case but the general rule is a dui and i say general because i would have to actually see your disposition the general rule is a dui is not an inadmissible offense it's not a crime of moral turpitude a dwi driving while under the influence or d is a dui is not a dwi is so if you're driving while under the influence Yes, that's inadmissible. DUI is not. It could lead. It could say, well, you don't have good moral character, but you are still eligible to adjust your status. So as long as you okay. generally have a DUI, you have 1.0 grams of marijuana, which has a waiver. You worked out of status, which is not a bar to getting a green card. My advice to you is get a better lawyer. A federal lawyer? Not a federal lawyer, a better lawyer. Better. Oh, okay. Better. Not butter, not federal. Better. Better lawyer. Okay. Okay? Oh, okay. You're talking to one, but you don't have to hire me. But just get a better lawyer who knows their law. <laughs> All right, hold on. One I second. come to you because you're smart, man. You're yeah, a good man, I, and I, I listen am. to your show. Is just yeah, it makes me uh, feel better to right. uh, listen to your words. So that's why I'll be shortly going for my interview for my citizenship. Right. I have. I don't have taxes that are not filed. But I have like an ongoing payment arrangement with the IRS okay. that I'm making monthly payments. That's fine. As long as, okay. you have, as long as you're on a payment plan with them and you are yes. up to date on your payments, that should not be a reason yes. to deny your citizenship. Okay. There's, there's no um, law, because let me explain to you. There's no okay. law in the Immigration Nationality Act that says if you owe you know, taxes, you don't mm-hmm. become a citizen. Okay. okay. Just because you can't afford to pay your taxes doesn't mean you can't afford to become a citizen. I mean, you're not eligible to be a citizen. Now, what okay. the law says is if you don't file a tax return that you were supposed to file, then, right. then that's a different story. Okay. That's, okay. that's bad moral character. If you file okay. a tax return and you yeah. owe all this money and you make no arrangements to pay it and you just keep owing it and say, screw government, I'm not going to pay it even though I filed this tax return, that's also bad moral character. But in your okay. particular case, you filed the tax return, you're on a payment plan, you're complying with yes. the payment plan, you're a good person, yes. you're trying your best. Okay, okay. Right. Another question. Right. Um, I had um, like a trespass um, um, citation. A what I citation? Got a lawyer. A what citation? A, tre- a trespass. 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 Trespass, okay. Yeah. Um, we went to court. The day we went to court, they just, um, I think she arranged with the prosecutor and I just did community service. And after that, they sent me another letter saying that they, they dismissed it. Okay, it's still a conviction. 
because okay. if you did community service, you had mm -hmm. to have pled guilty to something because you don't do community service okay. and not plead guilty to something. Where was this okay. trespass? In Maryland or in New York? Um, okay. Where? In Maryland. In Maryland. I don't know yes. the penal code of Maryland, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, generally, okay. in almost every state, a trespass is, is a petty offense. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't guarantee that's a petty offense in Maryland until I that's, see your disposition. That's what the lawyer said. Okay, I, I know, but said. you know yeah. what? When I hear that's what the lawyer said, we hear lawyers mm -hmm. say bad advice every day, including to, okay. including to uh, the gentleman I just spoke to before. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, okay. I, I, I don't put full credence in the lawyer said it. Uh, okay. If, now, when was this trespass? When did this happen? Oh, it was, in, it was in September, and I went to court in November. All right. So, and I was supposed to go again in December, but th by then they dismissed it. Oh, well, if it was dismissed, that's different than you were found guilty of something. But if you did community service, then it doesn't sound like it yes. was dismissed. So, yes. uh, you know, that's number one. OK, so you got it when you're doing your citizenship and you have uh -huh. you have an arrest, you have two things to consider. Okay? Okay. Consideration number one is, OK, because when you go and go on your citizenship interview, you got to bring a disposition that says here is my criminal arrest. OK, okay. this is what happened. OK, uh -huh. and don't forget. This is, you know, we're in the age of, you know, the orange guy in the White House, you know, the guy who thinks he's king, Donald Trump. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm not sure where you're from, but generally he doesn't like immigrants, the men, no matter I where they are. That. Okay, yeah. unless, mm -hmm. unless you're Norwegian, then you're okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so mm -hmm. um, when you go on your citizenship, when you go on your citizenship interview, the fr after you go through, you know, your, you know, you, you know, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and they swear you in and go through your application. The immigration officer is going to say, "Show me your disposition," and it's your, okay. it's your, it's your duty to bring in the disposition for your interview. Okay, so now okay. two things got to go through your mind. Mm -hmm. You're showing a disposition of a criminal record to an immigration officer. Number okay. one, when I show this, am I getting myself deported? Did mm -hmm. I just did I did I just show this immigration officer something that makes me deportable? I don't know for a fact that you're not deportable. I, 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 I'm going to make an assumption that you're not. OK, but mm -hmm. I don't know for a fact that you're not unless I actually see your disposition. OK, okay. so number I'm one right here. Good. I it don't I don't have. OK, you, it doesn't. Notice of no lay prosecution. OK, no lay prosecution. Okay, so then you didn't do community service then. No prosecution means they dropped the charges. Okay? Yes. So, okay, yes. so, all right, so good. All right, so now, now we know that you didn't plead guilty uh -huh. to a crime, uh, so you won't get deported. Okay. okay, now the next thing you have to consider is, okay, even though I won't get deported, even though I won't get deported, when I present this, am I showing that I don't have good moral character to become a citizen in the last five years. Now, you have an arrest. You have an arrest with Well, it was a citation. I wasn't arrested. It doesn't... Okay, you, it's a citation. Okay? Uh -huh. it, still, it still goes towards good moral character. Okay? okay. Now, the, the, the government chose to drop it. Whatever the, whatever the situation was that you found yourself, you know, you know where you shouldn't have been, you know, mm -hmm. my 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 feeling on on these situations is if you have one arrest within the five year period of citizenship and uh, the case was dropped by the prosecutor, which is basically what happened with you. My belief is, is that, you know, and this is what the law says. I'll tell you what the law says and then I'll tell you my belief after law says, you know, you have to be a person of good moral character for the last five years. It doesn't mean that for every minute and every second of the last five years, you're a person of good moral character. The law just says that you generally you have to be a person of good moral character. So my mm -hmm. my belief is when I read the law and I read that's what the law says. My belief is, is that everyone's entitled to a bad day. OK, because the okay. law doesn't say you have yeah. to have good moral character every day of your every second and every breath you took for the last five years. You're entitled to a bad day. Everyone, I even have a bad day sometimes. Okay. <laughs> now, mm -hmm. so my belief is that you're going to become a citizen. Does that mean okay. that my belief is that you're going to become a citizen means it's going to happen? No, because I'm not King Donald. 
I'm just a lawyer mm-hmm. on a show. You know, it's up to the officer to make you a citizen. Mm-hmm. Now, okay. now you may want to have a lawyer go with you. You may not. That's up to you. You know, it's not going to be okay. me. We're not going to come down from Maryland for, you know, your citizen. I mean, we can, certainly, but yes. I don't, I don't, th- I don't think you need us to come down to Maryland for you. But maybe you want to go to a local attorney. Okay. okay. Now, mm-hmm. the other thing is this. Okay. If you may want to consider when you go on your citizenship interview to bring evidence in case they say this is bad moral character, you know, this arrest, even though it ended up being nothing, because as immigration officers, they can say that all the time. And I've heard them say that you may Mm -hmm. want to consider bringing evidence to counter that I'm a good person. Here's letters okay. from friends. Here's letters from family. Here's letters from my pastor, from my employer. Whatever it is, okay. I, I work in the community. I do the charitable work. Whatever it is to show that you're a good person. Okay. You may want to consider that, okay? But I okay. think you'll be okay. Oh. Okay, thank you so you're much. You're very welcome. I applied for my citizenship on February. Uh-huh. Uh, my interview went on April. Everything went well. My ceremony is June 7th. But in the meantime, uh, I did get married in March 30th. But during the interview, the officer never asked and never thought about telling them that I did get married. So now, June 7th, I have to fill up a, what we call an N-500, an 50? Yes. And uh, one of the questions is, does, did your marital situation change from after the interview? I would, I would, I would tell the truth because I assume you were going to want to file for your, your spouse or maybe... Do you want to follow? Of course. Spouse? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So if certainly I would tell the truth regardless, but if you're going to file for your spouse and uh, you never mentioned on your citizenship ever in your, in your life that you were married and then all of a sudden you become a citizen and three months later you file for your spouse and lo and behold, you were married bef- before your citizenship interview. They're going to say you lied on your citizenship. You're going to have a big problem. No, I did not. I did not I marry mean, I did, before. I, I did got, not you marry. Got married, you got married between the time you filed and the time of your interview. Correct. Right, right. Uh, so I would, I would tell the truth. I would say I got married on this day. Fill it in. Okay. And if, and if there's now, they may, uh, you know, to be honest with you, they may say, okay, we want to re-interview you again. How come we didn't know this at the time? And you may, you know, and you may have a delay in your citizenship, not because it's your fault, but because the officer never asked that question. Now, you, correct. Now, you know. In all in all deference, okay, you you also needed to be a little more aware. And when you went on the interview, I'm just I'm I'm just being honest with you. You needed to be a little more aware too, and say, hey, I got married. I should even though the officer didn't ask me, I should I should tell him. You know, there's no uh, reason uh, not to not to say anything. But you know, you didn't you didn't. But I would I would correct that issue right now. And it's ultimately okay, but, uh, it's ultimately, and then I'll, I'll let you talk in a second. It's ultimately sure. it's ultimately just. Not, it's not relevant. It's not relevant to whether you're eligible or not eligible to become a citizen. It's just it wasn't asked. You want to tell the truth because if there's ever a time period, you never want to be said that I, I that you you never want to be called a liar by immigration. Okay, that, that's true. I, I don't want to be uh, right. to be a misrepresentation right. or anything like that. But but the thing is, have you ever asked for someone to someone when he goes to an interview how? I mean, everyone is nervous. Of course. Everyone is. Yeah. So I'm, you know, not, when the I'm, questions not, I'm not. I'm not blaming you. I'm just. I'm just saying. Just this is the reality. That's all. Yeah. And, and two it. weeks ago, I went. I went back to the same building. Right. Uh, obviously, they don't let you in unless you have an appointment. Right. For a uh, an interview. So security called that uh, a, a late. He. I explained to the guy, and he's like, "Wow, never heard of this situation." So he called a lady inside, and she told him. Don't worry about it. Just tell him to say yes. Situation changed, and just explain it, and right. it shouldn't be a problem. Right. Well, well, it, it's likely, it is likely that they will not swear you in on that day, and they're going to re-interview you again. It's likely. Really? Yeah. So, you, unfortunately, you, you hopefully that's not the case, and hopefully you get sworn in. Okay, but it is likely that they're going to re-interview you again to find out why. This was because they're going to see that the marriage happened before your interview, and they're going to want to interview you, and you'll have to explain. It was never asked. I didn't, you know, I didn't know. I, I realized it was never asked. I'm not trying to hide anything. Blah 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 blah. Just like what you told. Right. Me. All right. Yeah. All right. So that's okay. So there, on two okay. seven days, a possibility that I'm not going to be a citizen. Oh, you'll become a citizen. I'm just saying it may not be in seven days from now. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. I really appreciate it, okay. man. 
All right, good luck. Thank you. All right. Bye. I have a question about my parents. So okay. I'm a U.S. citizen, right? So my parents uh, got here last Christmas as a visitor. Uh-huh. And uh, what happened was I had a return ticket, too, from San Francisco Airport with my whole of my family, except me because I have a kid also. So what happened was we missed our flight, you know? So we missed our flight. Now uh, we came back to Texas. Uh, the flight was from San Francisco. Right. Now what happened is like you know I don't know either I file for my uh, parents as a petition or it's just uh, their status or uh, you know because their passport is they have to live uh, like within the six month period, okay. which is like twenty more days. Uh, how, how old are you? How old are you? You're over twenty one, I assume. I'm th- I'm thirty two. Okay, and your parents are from what country? Nepal. Nepal, and they've been here yes, for sir. how long now? Uh, so it's been like over five months, so okay. they have like uh, one okay, more month. Right. So this is what over. you're going to do. For each of you, okay. for your mother and for your father, you're going to do two separate adjustment applications, an I-45, an I-130, an I-864 affidavit of support, an I-765 uh-huh. work permit, an I-131 advanced parole. You're going to do that adjustment package for your father. You're going to do that same adjustment package for your mother. They're going to adjust their statuses here, and they can get their green cards here if you choose. Okay, so if I file the adjustment st- status separately, it has to with the I-130 also. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay, and the affidavit support, I don't know about the how much income they want me because every year I had like over 35 to 40K. How so many, is how that many, going to help? How, or how many, how many, many you're married, children? What's your story with that? Okay, I, I'm married, first, first married, first wife, first kid. 18 months, so we were a whole plan so to go fam- Nepal, so your family, except me. your family of three, and then yes, your mother and father would be five in total, right? So at yes, tw- 20,000 for two, and you got, th- uh, say, if, as long as you're above around 32, I don't have the poverty guidelines in front of me, but assuming uh, you're above 32, 33,000 a year, you should be okay. Great, okay. Right. I think that was it, because I was very confused with, like, if I'm going to file I-130 also, or just the 485, no, or just the work permit. No, you're you're going to do everything, everything at one time. Now, let me just say one but, other thing now, Nick. The immigration just changed, and we didn't really talk about this yet, because I haven't had the question, so I want to make sure it's uh-huh. clear to everybody. Uh-huh. Department of Homeland Security just changed their rules that uh-huh. when you file an adjustment application now and that application uh-huh. changed, it's automatic uh-huh. deportation. So make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you know sure. what you're doing. And if not, then at least certainly have a consultation with us. All right, so hold Great, on. Great, yeah, I'll definitely okay. do that. Hold on. Back in 2016, I'm a US citizen. Back right. in 2016, I filed a K-1 visa for my fiance then. And um, he was sent back to the United States um, for revocation. And when he got back here, they told me the four months approval has lapsed. So I have to, you know, refile it again for the second time. Why was it revoked? Which I did. Why was it revoked? They didn't give me a reason why it was revoked. They didn't tell me. But, I mean, that, the consulate did not tell me. The consulate just told me when I called them that well, I was going to get something back from USCIS. And so you never they didn't did. tell me. Yeah, that's what they told me. All right. And yeah. when I called USCIS to find out what was going on, they told me, well, the four months has already left. The only thing I could do is refile it again for the second time. Okay. Now, we- you, know, you, know what, you know what Albert Einstein said? That somebody who does the same thing over and over again, expecting different results without changing something, is that's the definition of insanity. So you're going to file again. You're going to do the same thing again. You're going to get the same thing that's going to happen. So we got to figure it out. It happened already. It's already happened because I filed a game and, last year. And I got an approval. And and the same thing happened. Insanity, isn't it? That's what insanity is. You do the same thing over and oh. over again, and think, thinking you're gonna have you're gonna get a different result. So we gotta we gotta find out where where's your fiance? He's um, he's in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, how many times have you gone to visit him? Well, I already did. I went to visit him how many t- uh, in how m- April. Okay, all right. How many times in the last two years have you visited your fiance? Um, twice. Okay, all right. So that's that's a decent amount of time. They don't most usually. Usually, the reason why a fiance visa is is denied usually is they don't believe it's a real relationship. They believe that this is a relationship other than for love. Um, that's usually why fiance visas are denied. Then you have the whole other thing. Maybe he has a criminal record. Maybe he's a national security threat. He has communicable diseases. Yeah. That I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure he's a decent person. 
So generally, so generally, generally the reason is, is they don't believe it's a real relationship. So when was this revoked? When was this? When was um, the second one was um, last year, September. All right. So I think, that was the I, think time. I think I think we're going to need to do this again. But if we do this again, we got to change something up somewhere so we don't get the same okay. insane result again. So hold on one we second. We got married, though. Okay, oh, oh, oh you got married. Thing. Okay, you got married. Yeah, I went to Nigeria. All yeah, right. that's what I was trying to I say. Right, I so, went now, to Ni- so now now you're going to file an I-130, but they're still not going to okay. believe it's a real relationship, so we still got to change something up somewhere. We got to prove it's a real relationship if that's the reason why it was denied. We have to find out. Why okay. was this fiancé visa denied? I'm taking guesses. I have no idea. We got to find out why was it denied and then be prepared when he goes to the interview that we're not going to get the same result again. Okay. So hold okay. on one second, all right? All right, all right. Actually, you answered a part of my question yesterday regarding my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. He was here in the U.S. and he got arrested and he served five years, six months. Right. And then they deported him back to Jamaica. What was he arrested so for? So right now I'm for drugs. All right. So uh, all right. So you're at, so you want to know? Can he come back to America? Yes. They said after ten years he can come back. So That's I wanted to see if I can file for him. They they and, they is not telling you the truth because okay. if you were deported for drugs, that is a permanent bar to ever coming back ever. Oh. All right. Now the general rule is you get deported. Yes, you can you can try to come back after ten years with a waiver. Absolutely. That's what the law says. But the law also says that if you have a drug conviction, you're barred from ever entering America, unless it's for 30 grams or less of marijuana. Your, your boyfriend, in these situations, the only thing we do is we look at the fairness of the removal hearing, was his rights violated? And sometimes they deport citizens when they didn't know they were citizens. You know, maybe your boyfriend came here when he was a kid and one of his parents were citizens before he was 18. Yes, yeah, it- Yes, his aunt filed for him, so he had his green card at the time when he was arrested. Okay, how, how old was he when he got his green card? I'm not sure, but he got arrested when he was like about 21. Okay, so were, were his parents, you got to find out, were his parents citizens before he was 18? That's really comes down to. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, you know, the other thing is we can look at his removal hearing, but most likely five years in jail, that's unless his conviction happened prior uh, to 1990, he's not eligible for any relief from deportation. So he was under the law, sounds like he was correctly deported. So he's- under, Yes, because yeah. they sent him back 2010, yeah. they deported yeah. him back yeah. to yeah. Jamaica. Yeah, if you're in jail for more than five years for drugs, there's no relief in deportation for you. So uh, unless he was, his parents were citizens before he was 18, he's not gonna come back to America legally. Not coming back to America, oh. period. And I'm sorry period. about that. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. That's what oh. it was. Oh, boy. Yeah. There should be something in the yeah. law. There should be something in the law that says, you know what? You have X amount of years of, you know, rehabilitation. You show you're a good person. You've changed over leaf. Why, why should Lisa, who's a U.S. citizen, have her life totally screwed up forever because of something that she felt, a man she fell in love with 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, or it's something he did 20 years ago and he's now a different person. The guy who got deported different than the guy today. Yes, yeah. that should be the law, but it's not. Oh, Lord. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Bye.